Hi, this is Lynette Carrington, and I am the Director of Marketing at Dynamic Page Solutions here in Arizona, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we're going to discuss secrets for turning leads into conversions, and then for anyone attending the webinar, we will also have a special offer towards the end, so you want to make sure that you stay tuned for the whole thing. Um, now, if you've been in the real estate industry for any length of time, uh, you know it's been a rough several years for the market, and it's affected nearly every city and every state in the nation. And along with the tough times that agents and brokers have experienced, home buyers have begun evolving and responding to the declining market and to the changes in technology. Now, home buyers are smarter than ever before, and certainly more tech savvy in the years past, thanks to the internet. Um, this has presented a unique challenge to agents because real estate leads have become a little less loyal and more demanding at the same time and conversions as you know can be really tough to make. So today we're going to take a look at several strategies that you can put into practice to help you get and convert your lead and then also some little tricks that you can use and some good resources for you as well. Um, now, in order to convert a lead, you first have to have a good lead. So let's talk about some tips to verify or scrub your leads if you are indeed doing that. Uh, some lead programs will try to verify a lead's information before that information ever reaches you. Or if your program does not auto-verify a lead's email, you may need to do it yourself. Regardless of what you do, some percentage of leads will be bad no matter what. Um, you'll see your share of creative language and uh, gibberish, but uh, beyond that um, you'll get some amount of looky-loos, tire kickers, or just garbage content. But however, there are ways that you can attempt to verify a lead that may initially appear to be a bad lead. So first off, you want to look at the information that your lead has provided to you. Did they leave an email but a bad phone number? Or maybe they left a phone number but a bogus email address? Regardless, it pays to follow up immediate, with immediate contact and reach out to the lead with whatever information that they did leave you. Um, I've listed three resources here. These are all good places to check. Um, the first one is DexKnows.com. If you have somebody's name but you're curious as to whether a phone number is correct, you can actually enter someone's name and their city and it will present anyone that has a similar match. So you can often verify that way. Um, you can also go to google.com, which you're all familiar with, and um, if you put anybody's email address or phone number in quote unquote in the search box, it will also present you with a list of people um, or um, search results that might match, and you can also verify people that way. Uh, another resource is people.com, it's P-I-P-L dot com and you can enter someone's name and even just a state and it will also present you with a lot of information um, a name uh, people they're associated with an age a city sometimes you can get phone numbers so there's great information on that site as well um, now next up is perhaps the most important factor in starting the conversion process itself it's how quickly you can reach out and make contact with your lead now there are two components to the speed factor here uh, number one is how quickly you receive your lead information and number two is how quickly you can get back to the lead so let's look at the first part of that okay uh, if you're not currently using a smartphone I would say get one right away because that's that is definitely a factor in speed here uh, this will allow you to get leads as soon as possible and be certain to keep your phone with you as much as you possibly can and regardless of whatever CRM that's customer relationship manager uh, whatever CRM you are using be sure to set it up so that you can receive your leads via text and via email on your smartphone and you may not have considered this in the past, but depending on what phone service you have, what service provider you're using, um, you might receive a text faster than you receive an email, giving you just a slight time advantage in getting back to your lead a little sooner. <clears throat> Now the second factor is how quickly you can get back to your lead. So you also want to keep in mind that just because a lead has sent their information does not mean that you are the only real estate agent that they have contacted. A lead may have been searching a handful of sites and their information is out there floating around to half a dozen or more agents. Um, so you want to consider 
that more than three quarters of home buyers work with the agent that calls them first. So speed is definitely important in getting back to these people. Um, when you combine that statistic with the half, half a dozen or so agents that might have a leads information, you can see exactly why you need to try to beat them to the punch. Uh, you should have your CRM set up to follow up with a lead automatically via email. Um, but also call them just as soon as you possibly can. Your email response to your new lead uh, should say something to the effect that you'll be contacting them very soon by phone um, so you can find out more about the homes in which they are interested. Um, I also found a, an interesting quote from uh, Jeff Logue over at biggerpockets.com and it said, uh, based on PCMS Consulting's research, over 70% of prospects will work with the organization that contact them first. Combine that statistic with the fact that over 90% of all new home searches start on the internet and you can't afford to wait around when making that initial call to your lead. All right, um, now going through this bulleted list here, there's a couple things that you want to consider. Um, since over three quarters of all leads work with the agent who contacts them first, speed is a factor, so instead of just emailing them, you may also want to text them because a text is immediate and it is a little more personal and it makes it look like you're right there, you're right on top of it, and you'll get right back to them. Um, I think the best, the best plan of attack is to do the text, the email, and the phone call. Um, set your CRM to uh, notify notify your new lead via via email and text. Set your CRM auto follow up uh, to um, to automatically follow up by email with your lead, and then call your lead as soon as you can, because lead deterioration has become very intense and it happens so quickly you won't even realize it. Um, according to a lead response time study conducted by InsideSales.com and MIT. Uh, web lead data gathered and examined over a three-year period garnered one of these amazing statistics. The odds of calling to contact a lead decreased by over 10 times in the first hour alone. So you don't really have much time, and then when you throw into the mix maybe a bunch more uh, agents, then um, you'll, you'll see why you need to get back to them right away. Okay, um, now when you do contact your... Uh, contact your leads and get them into a drip system. You have several things that you can do and of course you are offering your service but why not add something more? Add a value added proposition. Um, maybe offer them an ebook uh, that gives them tips on getting ready to move and it could also in contain uh, action items like making sure that they're pre-qualified and making sure that they've uh, got the schools lined up. Anything to help them and get them on their way. Maybe send a personalized email strictly for that new lead that is very personalized according to what they're looking for. Maybe the, um, the specific neighborhood, the property, a specific um, subdivision. Um, provide them a list of comps for past sales prices or for similar homes for sale. Um, maybe offer a, a list to them that will give them ways that they can strengthen their credit score before moving. Invite your new lead to join you on all your social networking sites. I know that might sound a little funny, but even if this person doesn't commit to you in the long run, you still can increase your uh, sphere of influence within the social networking world. And it also gives uh, leads that haven't committed another way to get to know you. Uh, you also might want to offer to send updated list of similar properties or invite your lead to some kind of a social gathering at your office. Um, maybe every three to four weeks uh, have some kind of a meeting at your office where you're giving... Um, giving good information, home buyer topics, uh, you could even bring in guest speakers, but something that gives them something of value that they don't have to pay you for, it, but something that's still good information. So after you've uh, made contact with your lead, you definitely want to get them into a drip campaign on an ongoing basis, and I will also give you um, a, basically like a 30-day list that kind of gives you an idea of what you should be doing when. Um, now, in your drip campaign, uh, it's important because unless you have a hot lead that's ready to buy today, you're going to be waiting for them. Uh, you're going to be waiting three, nine months, 12 months. We've even heard of uh, people working with a lead for a couple of years. So um, you definitely want to uh, keep, them, keep them in close contact until they're ready. Um, put the leads into a campaign. 
um, offer them lists of similar properties on an ongoing basis, offer to get them pre-qualified. Uh, many of you are working with uh, lenders, so that is probably pretty easy. If you need any other suggestions on that, I'll have my contact information at the end of the webinar so you can call me. Um, invite your lead to meet you at a mixer or event. Um, give them tips to get them ready to move or also give them a checklist of free services that are um, important to people that are getting ready to move like maybe maid services, storage services, um, places that provide care for children, for dogs. I mean you just you don't really know all the things that are involved with moving until you have to sit down and think about it but if you spell it out for them and give them a list that's actually something that they won't have to spend time doing and they will see that as a value if you provide them something like that. This just illustrates what happens so frequently in uh, the real estate industry, especially with a lead that you have to work with for a long period of time. Uh, you work, you work, you work, you work, and then just finally that's it, you give up. But uh, just keep at it, and it's important that you uh, keep in contact via a CRM, if nothing else, so at least they know that uh, your lead knows that at least you're still interested in uh, helping them. Now, when you're following up with leads who aren't ready to buy, um, now keep in mind that more than three quarters of leads choose to work with the agent who contacts them first, so it does pay to keep to stay in contact. And since that lead may not be ready uh, to buy for three to nine months, you just need to keep in touch. That's all you have to do. Now, this is a schedule that you can look at. Um, this is just a, some basic ideas of what you can do over the course of 30 days to get in contact with your lead and to stay in touch to get the ball rolling so you can eventually make that conversion and get their commitment. Um, on day one, when that lead comes in, you want to email, text, and call. On day two, you want to follow up, offer to send them similar listings, and get them into some type of a drip campaign. On day four, you want to follow up again. Ask them for their time frame if you haven't already. Uh, ask them, you know, are you looking to move uh, in the next six months or maybe the next year? Or, you know, get their level of, uh, of readiness. On day seven, follow up again. Offer a personalized welcome video. One of the... Um, one of the sources that we really like is bombbomb.com and it is very easy to use, it's very inexpensive and you can personalize short little videos that you can send out uh, spe to your specific leads and it's, um, it's really nice because it's personalized and it's immediate and it's really easy to use. On day 10, invite your lead to join you in your social networking. On day 14, offer to get them pre-qualified or offer credit tips or both. Um, day 15, invite them to meet you at a social setting or at a meeting at your office, pref preferably. Face-to-face um, -face meetings are um, always a good way to get people to commit. Um, day 21, you want to supply a list of businesses related to moving. Again, that comes along as a, that valuable list of services that people need as they're getting ready to move. And on day 30, if you haven't asked already, try to get a commitment from them. Try to get their business. It never hurts to ask. Um, after day 30, um, on a bi-weekly basis, you will want to send out, uh, through your drip campaign, listings, important news, moving tips, and then just follow up uh, by phone from time to time if you can do that as well. Now you feel like you're getting burned out, this is where you can rely on your CRM a little bit. If you've had somebody that you've been working with but still hasn't completely committed or you feel like they're dragging their feet a little bit, rely on your CRM to continue to get your message out. Um, and make a checklist for yourself of follow-up action items. Um, if maybe there's 10 or 20 items on your personal checklist, you know, make sure that you've shown them a house, make sure you've invited them to join you in social networking, um, invite them to an open house. Um, get them pre-qualified but if you have something physical that you can look at that will remind you where you are in your overall process with helping this lead then that may also spur you to keep working with this person when you can see that that things are happening another thing that you can do is commit to follow up with forgotten leads to renew those relationships you know say that you've been working with someone for maybe over a year maybe a couple years maybe longer uh, it never hurts to dig up that old information and just touch base with those people and see where they're at in the process of moving or who knows maybe you can grab some referrals from those so what else can you do to convert um, 
Well, get out of your comfort zone. Just ask at any point during your uh, process in dealing with your lead. Don't be afraid to ask for their uh, commitment in getting you as your getting you as their real estate agent. It never hurts to ask, um, but do it when it's comfortable for you. Um, another thing that you can do is to make a press kit for yourself, and you can use this in a variety of ways. But um, a press kit might contain things like a professional bio, photos, um, testimonials from clients that you've dealt with in the past, press releases, media articles about you, your agency, or your brokerage, um, and then also too maybe an action item list that you'll be working on for your new leads. So provide them a list of all the things that you're going to be doing for them as they move towards uh, moving day. And you can pass these out. You can have them available uh, if you have those uh, monthly meetings at your office that you'll be inviting your leads to you can pass them out there but it's always nice to have everything all in one place and it looks very professional as well uh, remember that one-on-one -on -one interactions are strong so get face to face with your leads whenever you possibly can another tool that's really been great is um, offering leads the option to search for homes on Facebook you can kind of think of this as an extension of your website and uh, your friends, fans, leads, potential leads, anyone that you've invited to uh, join you in social networking can search for homes right on your Facebook business page. And since they're already on Facebook probably every day, they're already comfortable searching there. It's just kind of a value added thing that you're offering to people that you work with. Um, now before and after they search, they will also get to know you and your agency or brokerage through your social networking page. Um, they can look at your pictures, they can see your posts, read your success stories, see your new listings. So there's a lot of value in having somebody being able to see that right where they're searching because it kind of endears them to you. Um, a Facebook MLS IDX helps to integrate your marketing message more completely and it's just an extension of your website so the leads go in just like they normally would through your through your website and for those of you that are attending our website or our webinar today um, we have a special offer you can get a Facebook MLX I, MLS IDX um, for $99 setup fee and $10 hosting per month and that is a 50% savings over our regular cost just give us a call at 888-782-8184 and mention that you saw the special on the webinar and um, any of our people will be happy to get you uh, set up with that. Okay, uh, going back to conversions, um, some of the things that you can do, um, consider changing up your your uh, approach on how you are closing these people to convert. Um, according to a recent Baylor University study, overall findings suggest that salespeople who rely on standardized scripts and influence approaches should consider altering their presentations and selling styles to increase their levels of adaptation. Here's some more ideas for you. Can you be flexible in your approach? Um, is your client reserved or more outgoing? Maybe um, tailor your approach based on what their, what their attitudes are. Adapt your approach according to the wants and needs of your clients. So it's important to listen. Um, are they maybe asking a lot of questions about area schools or maybe crime statistics or the historical value of the area? You know, listen to what they're asking you and, and really grab a hold of the things that they feel are most important and run with that because obviously that's showing that you are interested in what they are finding important. Um, find common areas or uh, areas of interest or backgrounds. Um, just listen to what they're saying. Uh, do they like to travel? Are they involved in church activities? Maybe they have kids. Um, how are their political leanings? Uh, not that you would have to agree with them, but if you understand how important it is to them, maybe you can better adapt your approach to uh, meet what they feel is important. And if you should need any more suggestions or ideas, or if you have any questions specifically about some of the material that we covered today, um, you can call me directly at 480-214-3850, or you can email me at lynettec at dynamicpagesolutions.com. And we also have a lot of great information at dynamicpagesolutions.com. We have um, ongoing training, but we have videos, webinars, 
news. Uh, we have a great blog that we have there. And uh, that's training that you can have anytime, in addition to the fact that we will have ongoing monthly webinars. And we'll uh, post up information on those on our front page. Um, don't forget to join us on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Pinterest. And uh, same thing, we have lots of great tips and strategies and ongoing education. Thanks for joining us today.